new mail is finally coming in after that recent strike. So I have a good idea what most of these items are. And I think these three belong together. One of these items is a PCB mount BNC jack in case I have a project where I need to put a jack on a circuit board, then I can plug in some sort of BNC cable and hook up to a circuit, maybe a signal generator or something like that. So it's a through hole with a center pin and then four grounds, which also give it structural support. Then I've got these BNC to RCA jack. If this is a jack on a circuit or on an oscilloscope or a signal generator, I can plug in the BNC and now I have RCA cables that I can plug in. Whether I'm doing video, composite, or audio, I can maybe generate signals and send them into the cable. Or if this is plugged in to an oscilloscope, I can just look at the signals that way and plug this into whatever is generating them. And then we have some of those oscilloscope probe ground spring clips. These are sold in quantities of five, and they list three different inner diameters. This is 4.5 millimeter, so 4.5 seems to be the size I would want. So here's my Siglent probe. So now if I had a circuit board, I wanted to probe a signal and find a nearby ground and avoid using this longer antenna ground, I can do that. These probes did come with a few of these, but I wanted some extras. And I also wanted them for things like these older Tektronix probes I have laying around. I don't have any such ground clips for these older probes on some older scopes I have, so that's another reason I wanted to get some inventory. Another bundle of parts. This is a Nintendo old NES. 72 pin connector replacement. I do have four NESs and one of them definitely this connector is destroyed. So down here this plugs into the main board and this is where a game plugs in to make contact. I've tried to use some of these from eBay long ago like 15 or more years and they didn't work well. I thought I would take another chance. Sometimes these connectors for the game are so tight you can barely insert the game, or when you do, you can't push the game down to dock it like normal. So I don't know if this will work, but why not? Someday I'll give it a try. So if this is the NES console, the game would insert here. Well, that one actually has some flex to it, so maybe this one would work. Because you normally put the game in, and then you push it down, and the spring clip docks the game and then you push it again, comes back up and you remove it. Yeah, that's a lot better than the garbage one from eBay long, long ago. So now I'm more inspired to actually do that repair. And this is an RCA single to dual splitter. I had recently received the same sort of concept but in a fixed dongle so it would plug in and then just have the two jacks directly on the dongle. But in case that gets in the way, because there's other jacks nearby and you can't rotate it into any suitable position, I have this now extender cable version. So on the old NES, with mono audio out, I can plug this in, and then it has two parallel jacks. So if I plug in a stereo RCA audio connection, this can go on toward the television, and of course it's still mono, but now it's going to be at least on left and right. And a couple of those NES-style security screwdrivers. I believe the sizes of these typically are sold in pairs of something like 3.8 and 4.5 millimeter. And these are the complete screwdrivers, not just a bit. Just like long ago on eBay, I ordered the bit set for these. And of course, I still have them somewhere, but I don't know where. So 
I thought this time I'm going to order an actual screwdriver because it's harder to lose. But I'll find a way. So if you want to take apart an old NES game, maybe to clean it or even fix it, they have those weird security screws, so you need the security bit of whatever size fits. And it's not the bigger one. And so I think it's a 3.8 to get the games apart. And there's the typical old NES game, so maybe I would clean the contacts on this one, but otherwise it's seeming to be in good condition. 74HC32 through hole, 74HC161, and those custom ROM type things, and I believe, is this the lockout chip? This is a restocking attempt. And that's impressive that they came in anti-static packaging. Even though the chips are just thrown in, they could have had bent leads, but they looked reasonably intact here. There's a few bent pins, but nothing that can't be managed. And we don't need a magnifier to see this is an AY38910 audio generator. And those are microchip branded. I got them just to have in case I want to make more of these sound generator experiments. This other one I got on AliExpress maybe a couple of years ago is labeled GI, General Instrument. But now I got some more of these to maybe do things like make stereo sound generators. More parts. 2-pin and 3-pin small 0.1 inch pitch screw terminals. I don't know what kind of circuit used to be on here, but that sticker's been there, I think, 20 plus years. So these are 0.1 inch. They don't really stack well. You can see they're splitting apart with, if you try to take two of them and make a six pin. If you're soldering this, you can try to force them in place and then make the connection underneath. So I was running out of these, thought I would restock. And between the recent 1111, as well as any Christmas-related sales on AliExpress, I've been ordering more guitar pedals. In some cases, these are averaging 20-something to 30-something dollars Canadian, but sometimes I've gotten these for like 16-something dollars. So right now, there's this Rowan flanger and this vintage phase. So I'll start turning on the flanger in a second and then later go to the phase. Now this switch, if I put it on filter... versus normal... Yeah, I don't know what that filter is, but for a second there I, I was also getting a squeal out of that filter switch, so gonna leave that in normal. It works. Now, if I turn on this phase, First, nothing. Turn it on. I'm not really hearing anything at all, any effect. There's obviously a slight difference in sound. I don't know if it might be just getting quieter or EQ'd a bit. But there's no phase. Okay, I'm gonna go get another phase pedal and see what it's supposed to be like. So without... And 
when you turn it on, I'll put the speed on the slowest and then turn it up. So there's a background effect. So there's something going on with this vintage phase. I'm gonna have to take that apart maybe and see what's going on inside. At least this is only 16 or something dollars that I paid. So worst case, if I can't fix it, if it's not something simple, Maybe I'll just put my own phase circuit in there. Either way, that's a future project. Thanks to supporters of the channel for helping make all this possible.